today worthy to receive all the adoration, worthy of every hand clap, worthy of every hallelujah, every shout of praise belongs to our God this morning. We celebrate you, Lord God. We celebrate you, Lord God. We celebrate you, Lord God. We celebrate you in this place. We exalt your name, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. No rock will cry out for us today. No rock will cry out for us today, Lord. We bless your name, El Shaddai. We bless your name, El Shaddai. You are worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We exalt your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good and worthy to be praised this morning. I want to welcome you into the presence of the Lord. Welcome to Connect Church where the presence of God resides. We just worship the Lord this morning. And we invite you to continue in worship as we go before the Lord further into his presence. Praise team. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is already in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glorify his name and give him the glory for him alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are standing in his presence and in his presence there's fullness of joy in his presence. There is liberty, hallelujah. Whatever it is that you need, you're going to find it here in his presence. Hallelujah. Welcome to Connect Church and welcome to this time of worship. If you are joining us at home, we are so pleased to have you joining us right now online. Share this broadcast and let's worship the Lord together because he is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Are you ready to lift his name this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to dance to our God. We're going to lift our hands and shout to our God because he's worthy of that and much more. Hallelujah. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready, church? Come on, come on. This is an important time in the service, the time of worship. That's why it's important that you make it to the time of worship. You don't get late for worship. So thank you for making it for the time of worship because this is where we connect to the heavens. And this is the only thing that we give to God because every other thing is for us. But this is for him. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out. Look at your neighbor. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Hey, come on. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Say. Hey, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out.
He will not lose a battle over your life. Can you just open up your mouth and worship him? Woo, he's about to move every mountain on your behalf this morning. Raise up a worship. Come on. Raise up a worship to the undisputed champion. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. Every battle that he has ever fought, he has won. And your battle different. Come on, worship him. Worship him from the perspective of victory because he has already given you victory. We worship you. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. someone today there is something that you're expecting God to do you want God to move but God is saying just sow the seed you know what that seed is just sow the seed in faith and watch God move I love God because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but God does and we have the peace to go on 
and not even worry about it. So cast your seed. That is a word for someone today. You're looking again and you're saying, but I, all I have is this. God says, cast that and watch me. Amen. If you believe in that, give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God on this morning. I'm so happy to see all of the faces today. God bless you. God bless you. We would like to welcome those who are watching online, our, our Houston family. Amen. Praise God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Our apostle. Praise God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. All of our guests that are watching for the first time online, as I always say, stay connected. You are tuned in for a reason. There is a word for you today, and it's already just seasoned. All the ingredients is in it just for you. Amen. So stay connected. Hallelujah. We'd like to welcome our guests in the house. Any first, second, third time guests in the house? Wave your hand really high. Amen. My sister there, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody on this side? Amen, amen, amen. Where I connect family, please give our guests a hand praise. God bless you, my sister. Hallelujah. I don't know how you came here today, but just know God was behind it. He was behind the mouth. He was behind the invitation. He was behind it. Amen. So you just ready yourself and receive what God has for you today. There's revelation here for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation lets us know that we know without a doubt. Nobody's going to steal that. I know that I know. Amen. So walk out of here with revelation. Amen. Praise God. Let me go on to these announcements because I am not the speaker on today. But let me go into the announcements. Praise God. Hallelujah. April 15th through 17th is six-year anniversary that is quickly, quickly, quickly approaching. Amen. And so I'm so happy to now announce that we will be celebrating in our new building. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't tell y'all how hard it's been to announce that without keeping my mouth shut. I just been throwing clues. I don't know if y'all caught that. But anyhow, I can say it this Sunday. We are in our new building. Give God a hand praise because he's so faithful. Hallelujah. So please mark your calendars. You can also be a part of this celebration. Amen. You know, when, we, when you move, there's cleaning and all types of things that has to take place. So we want to invite you to come on out on Thursday, amen, to our new building and help clean and do whatever it is that you do. And if you don't want to come, I know y'all people that are homeowners, I got handymans. Send your handyman. We can use your handyman too, amen. So come on out. Really though, that's real talk, amen, because we're going in and we're going to celebrate on that weekend, amen. So don't be told. So come on out again. I believe we're going to be there this Thursday because we're preparing week by week. So amen. Praise God, Pastor Micah. Yes, we will be there on this Thursday. Um, last Thursday we met at 5 p.m. So please plan to come on out and just do whatever you can. Amen? Amen. Amen. And um, the address is 8678 Archibald Avenue in Rancho Cucamonga. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All righty. Also, too, that's Easter weekend. So we will be celebrating all kind of things that weekend. All right. I believe that concludes our announcements on today. So again, Thursday, we will not meet here for our midweek encounter. We'll meet in our new building. Praise God. Amen. So also, I want to say, as we segue into our giving, please, now that we've all seen the building, we are, with the open heart, you are able, you have an opportunity to, opportunity to plant a seed in the new building. And man, a lot of times we hear, oh, we're collecting for a building fund, and we don't see a building, right? But guess what? We see our building. So remember, when it's time to give, whatever you have, praise God, contri contribute. Be a part of this move, praise God. So let's not forget during our giving time. I'm going to call up Pastor Micah, and he's going to take us right on in. Amen? Praise well, God praise for you the all. Lord, everybody. I said, well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and say, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Let somebody know they look good. They look pretty. They look handsome. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Amen. A lot of places you could have been this morning. But you're here, and we thank God for it. We thank God for all of you that are watching online, our Houston church. 
those of you literally all over the world, we welcome you to Connect Church International. Amen, amen. Well, it's that time in the period of service where it is giving time. Can we praise the Lord for giving? Amen. Amen. Pastor Lashana, you should have been up here during the offering time. My God, you were talking about the seed. Lord, have mercy. And I, sometimes my heart breaks when truth goes first, forth and people aren't paying attention to revelation. My God, sometimes Pastor Micah's heart just kind of goes out because Pastor Lashonda was truly ministering about the seed. And that's, that's all I was going to talk about as we're getting our tithes and offering ready in Genesis um, 8, I believe it is. Genesis 8, 22, I believe it is. I'm not sure. Genesis 8. Um, the Bible says, as long as the earth remains, is that Genesis 8? As long as, it, as long as the earth remains, it will be cold, heat, summer, winter, seed, time, and harvest. And, 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 and your seed may leave your hand, but listen to me, it will never leave your life. Your seed may leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. Whatever you're believing God for. I want you to trust God for a great exchange. Let go with the, what, what, what you've been holding on to, not just financially. You know, we're talking about offering right now, but whatever it is you've been holding on to, let go of it and receive what God has for you. And a lot of times our finances represent a lot of what we do. Amen. Our time, our energy, our sweat. We work a nine to five, a lot of us. Amen. So we could be out with our kids. We could be doing a lot of things. So when you sow your financial seed, God looks at that as more than just money. He looks at it as your time, your sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. It represents so much more to God. So when you let go of what's in your hands, and I'm not just talking about finances, but it's inclusive of, it's inclusive of finances. You receive what's in God's hand. Jesus was the seed for the New Testament believer. So when Jesus went down on the cross... That was a seed that God the Father sown to fulfill the covenant. Amen. So Jesus didn't die. He died for three days. Amen. But he resurrected. Whatever leaves your hand will never leave your life when you put it in the hands of God. Get your seed, get your tithes and offering ready on this morning. And when you're sowing, know that the seed is not going to leave your life. I'm telling you as a man of God, God has something in store for you. Before the month runs out, God has something in store for his people. We're talking about an unlimited God that has everything. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The gold is mine, saith the Lord. The silver is mine, saith the Lord. Everything you need is in the hand of God. Amen. Can you trust him? Ushers, will you direct the people on how they're going to give this morning? God loves what type of giver? A cheerful giver. So as you're sowing your seed, put a smile on your face, and God's going to put a smile in your heart. Amen.
Stretch your hands towards the altar. Let's begin to prophesy over our seed. Come on and speak to the seed. Command it to bring forth the harvest, Father, in which we are believing you for. We thank you, God, because we know that our seed never leaves our life, God. people minister from a place in which they know God has done something from them. Woo! Let's stand on our, receive, uh, on our feet and receive the woman of God this morning because I believe God's going to speak a word to the hearts of their people. Come on, let's receive with Jesus joy Pastor Lily as she gets ready to disseminate the word of God this morning. Receive her. Come on and celebrate God for her. Come on, give it to Jesus. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ain't God good? Hallelujah. So excited once again to be in the presence of the Lord with you all. Praise God. Thank you for showing up in his presence. Come on, clap your hands and give yourself some encouragement for showing up this morning. Hallelujah. I know you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to come here. So we give God the praise for your life. And I'm, 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 I'm bringing greetings from Apostle in Houston. Come on, give God the praise for Houston. So we, for those of you who don't know, we just started a branch in Houston, another campus in Houston. And the set man of this house is right there and he's, he's helping the baby grow because it's the baby. And the baby needs the father to help it grow. So we are going to be here with the mother or the father. Is that style? Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's take our seats. Hallelujah. We thank God. We celebrate... Uh, everybody who came out on Thursday to the new building to help. Thank you so much for serving. Because your blessing is in your service. So thank you for showing up on Thursday. A lot of people showed up in the new building. And it was, you know, fun to see the video because I wasn't there because I was at work. But thank you. God bless you for taking time to serve your father. Hallelujah. We are in Genesis chapter 39 because um, I'm about to go catch my flight very quick. Um, I told you last week when I was preaching, I said, this bus is moving. If you are not getting in this bus, actually, this flight is moving. So if you are sleeping, you're going to be left behind, right? So God is doing a lot of great things in different parts of the world and he's using us in Connect Church to do it. Praise God. So after the service... After I finish talking to you and, and, you know, giving the word of God, I'm going to be quickly going to the airport uh, to go somewhere else to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're in Genesis chapter 39. We're going to read from verse 1. Last week was amazing. How many of you were blessed by last week's <laughs> message? Last week we talked about your vision and we talked about faith. Faith that carries the vision, faith that does not relent, faith that stays strong and holds on until the vision comes to pass. Hallelujah. Praise God. So 
Today we are still in that direction, in another dimension, but in that direction. Hallelujah. I want to still encourage somebody because I believe that the word of God, when we come together, this is the right place for us to encourage one another so that when you feel weak, we are strong for you. When you feel like you cannot do it anymore and you feel like you cannot go on, you come in this house and get charged up to go back and do what God told you to do. Even when you felt like it wasn't going the way you wanted it to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. So last week we talked about the faith of a finisher. So this week we're talking about commitment to your vision or commitment to your dreams. Commitment to your dreams. So we're all going to read. Can we all start reading from verse 1? All right, with the voice of evangelists, remember, let's read with life. Come on, let's do it again. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. House, his master, the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his head. Ooh. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Mm. Yes. Amen. Let's stop there for now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you will bless the reading of your word and that each and every person in this house will receive a revelation, a personal revelation for their journey, for their faith, for their vision, for their dreams in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for putting your words in my mouth that I may speak your heart to your people in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know the story, but for those who don't know the story, Joseph's brothers betrayed him. And Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit, but Joseph survived. And he was sold to the Midianites, and the Midianites in turn sold him to Potiphar's house in Egypt. The Bible says he prospered in Potiphar's house. In fact, the Bible said Potiphar prospered because of Joseph. I know some of you are in households where there is prosperity because you are in that household. I know some of you are in jobs where there is prosperity because you are in that job. I know some of you are in marriages where there is prosperity because you are in that marriage. Praise God. The Bible said Joseph was so, so much in service to Potiphar that Potiphar thought to just hand over everything to Joseph. Joseph was in control of everything, every single thing. The Bible even says that the only thing that he concerned himself with was just to put food in his mouth. Every other thing Joseph was taking control of. The servants in the house, I bet the servants were calling him boss too because he was the boss, he was a servant, but also he was a boss to the other servants. Praise God. So he prospered. And how did he prosper? He was committed. He was committed to what was entrusted in his hands. He worked tirelessly. Can you imagine your boss telling you that I'm going to hand over the company to you? That I'm just going to come here once a month and just greet everybody, but you just continue, take, take over. Just, I want you to run the company. Run this whole company, like all the branches in the USA, you're going to run them. I trust you. I'm giving you the keys to everything. I bet Joseph was even paying the workers. I bet Joseph was even going to, uh, having access to Potiphar's bank account to go get some money and pay the employees because that's how much he trusted him. Yes, yes. Praise God. So he served Potiphar. He ran that house like it was his. 
Praise God. He did it so good that Potiphar said, I'm just going to leave everything in your hands. Luke chapter 16 verse 12 said, if, And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Luke chapter 16 verse 12. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you a property of your own? God wants you to practice here, here, here in Connect Church. He wants you to practice right here. He's taking you to the nations and he showed you the dream. He showed you the vision to take you all over. Whatever your ministry is. But he says be faithful here, right? You have to be faithful here, taking care of this house. Not seeing this house as Apostle Promise's house. Not seeing this house as Pastor Lily's house. But seeing this house as your own house. And serving diligently. Serving without being pursued. Serving without nobody calling you. Because you see this as the kingdom. You see this as your father's house. Hallelujah. No, I don't want to commit to what's not mine. I don't want to put all that energy. That's not mine. That's not mine. Verse 10 says of that, of that chapter, Luke, uh, Luke chapter 16. Verse 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you are faithful over little things. If you are faithful over coming early to church and taking a vacuum and vacuuming the church. If you are faithful, which is asking anybody, what can I do in the church? Is there something that I can do? Can I help? Can I come early and do something? If you are faithful over little. If you are faithful over little. God say he will entrust much into your hands. Praise God. A lot of people want God to entrust much in their hands. But they refuse to, to be faithful over little. Some people are looking for a mega church before they start doing what God has served, sent them to do. They, they, they're looking for this church to be a 10,000 member church before they use their gift in this house. God said you need to preach fire even when there's seven people on Thursday. There is five people on Thursday service. Preach fire. You don't wait until there's 5,000 people. You start from little. Praise God. So, Joseph was successful. He was killing it, running the whole thing. Committed into running Potiphar's house. And then the Bible says one day, all hell breaks loose. Mrs. Potiphar looks at Joseph and sees this cute little thing. He doesn't see Joseph as a servant anymore. You know, he, he, she was right though, because the Bible does say there in a part, part B of verse, um, what is that verse? It say verse 6, part B, the Bible says that um, Joseph was handsome. He was hot. <laughs> and Potiphar's wife forgot that he's uh, Mrs. Potiphar and he saw Joseph as his, you know, boo thing. <laughs> Praise God. And the Bible says that she tried to help himself, uh, help herself rather. And, and uh, Joseph refused. Joseph did everything right, right? He's not supposed to go to prison. He did everything right. He was faithful. He was honest. He was committed. He, he, he <laughs> and he was fine. Yes, Nikki. <laughs> he did everything right. And yet, he was sent to prison. What happens when you lose everything that you have worked hard for? What happens when you lose that good thing? He was so used to running the house. And I'm sure he had access to Potiphar's latest donkey. You know, I'm sure he, would, he was able to go to the, the dealership of all the donkeys and, and select the, the latest donkey and, you know, drive it all around, you know. And in, at that time, if, I mean, if, if it was today, probably the Rolls Royce and the Bentley. He had access to everything. And now he is thrown into jail. All hell breaks loose. What happens when you lose your good thing? What happens to your character when you lose your good thing? Were, were you just good because of that good thing? Right. Or was it your character to be good? 
Praise God. Were you only dedicated because of the paycheck? Were you only waking up 5 a.m. and making sure you get to work on time because of the paycheck? Are you dedicated to your work? Yeah, your job. I know it's not your business, but you're working there. You applied for the job. You said you wanted the job. Can they trust you? So what happens when you lose that good thing? What happens when Apostle Promise does not call you anymore? What happens when Pastor Liddy doesn't praise you anymore? What happens when, you're, when, when, when your good husband is not good anymore? What happens when your good wife is not good anymore? What happens when your good kids are not good anymore? Praise God. Because we only think that we, 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 we're supposed to, 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 to love and be committed to something when, when, when it's good, right? Most people think that it's, it's, it, commitment is only needed when things are good, right? Who needs a good mother when everything is good? Because a good mother is needed when things are bad. Like a good mother will love their child back to life. Even when their child is going out and wandering out in the world and doing whatever that they want to do. The time for you to be a good mother is when your child is losing his mind. That's the time to be a good mother. When your wife is losing her mind, that's the time to be a good husband. When your wife is losing her mind, that's the time to be a good husband. And when your husband is, is losing his mind, that's the time. What happens when the good thing is now not that good anymore? Does your commitment change? Joseph, it was great. You were committed when you had all the, all the attention and all the money. That was good. But now all that is stripped away and you are thrown into prison. Are you still committed? So he's now in a situation where it looks like being dedicated and being committed didn't pay. He is in the situation where it feels like, how can I, how can I be so sold up into this work, into serving God and, and, and coming to church and serving in the church, and then this bad thing happens to me. Praise God. He had every reason to have excuses to change and be not committed anymore. God, this is not the dream you showed me. In the dream that you showed me, I was supposed to be standing up and people bowing for me. In the dream that you showed me, people were supposed to be bowing for me. What's going on here? Why am I in prison? What's going on, God? There was nothing in the dream about jail. There was nothing in the dream about being lied about. There was nothing in the dream about being mistreated. There was nothing in the dream about people talking about me. When you showed me this vision, I thought it was all going to be all beautiful and all nice. I didn't, I didn't see this coming. Hallelujah. Have you found yourself in a situation where it's totally, it's totally contradictory to what God showed you? Totally contradictory to what God showed you. God showed me, God, you showed me promotion and now I'm getting fired. What happened? God, you said I was going to be the lender and not the borrower and yet I'm busy borrowing. I'm going to one loan shop to, the, to another. I'm borrowing because I cannot afford to pay my bills. What happened? Praise God. I remember when our, because I started, I started uh, being active in the church as early as 15 years old, leading worship. And I remember many men of God and women of God prophesying upon my life. You will, you will go to the nations of the world. Your songs will be known all over the world. And I, 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 got, I was 20, I was 25, I was 30. I was like, Lord, when is this going to happen? My husband would try so hard because he's always supported my music career. He, we will record one song, one single, we'll put it out there and we'll have like 10 views on YouTube. The prophecy came long time ago. Not even one person. Many men of God prophesied. A lot of prophecies gone ahead. But a man manifestation had not come yet. And it's easy to be discouraged. I kept asking, when are things going to change? I, I, I'm serving you. I'm, 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 I come here very early in the morning rehearsing. 
leading people to worship and people are getting blessed. When will my turn come? Praise God. And the devil whispers in your ears, where's your God now? Where's your God now? Verse 21, we see three things that God did to help Joseph while he was in prison. Can we read verse 21 once again? And I want us to read it all together powerfully. Come on, let's go. No, 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 no. Not Luke. We are going back to the scripture that we, Genesis 39. Genesis 39. All right, let's go. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So even in the prison, even in the prison, the Bible says in verse 21, the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. So one of those three things that God did to help Joseph in prison was that the Lord was with him. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell them the Lord is with you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I've come to tell you the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you right there in the prison. I know you had to sell your house, but the Lord is with you. I know you had to sell your car, but the Lord is with you. I know you thought your vision and your dreams would have come to fruition by, by now. And you did everything, invested everything. You lost everything, but the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know he left you for another woman, but the Lord is with you. I know she left you for another man, but the Lord is with you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I know you don't think that you are appreciated enough in that job, but the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. He says, I'll be with you. Even when you are mad, even when you're tired, even when you're weak. Even when you feel like you cannot do it anymore. Even when it feels like it does not pay to be committed. The Lord says he's with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, look at two people one more time. Tell them the Lord is with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, look at another person. Say the Lord is with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you. You might have a terrible diagnosis over your head. The Lord is with you. Maybe the doctor told you you only have a few months to leave. The Lord is with you. Maybe the doctor told you that you won't even see June of this year. But the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you even in the prison. Number two. He showed him mercy. He showed him mercy. His mercies are new every morning, the Bible says. Hallelujah. There's fresh mercy for every day. Can you imagine God showing you mercy, giving you mercy that is fresh every day? He says you don't even have to finish the one for yesterday. Before that one for, for the day is, is over, I'm, I'm already cooking another mercy. Because they are going to be new like fresh bread. Does anybody know what agege bread is? If you are from Nigeria, that fresh, fresh, fresh agege bread. It hits differently. Praise God. His mercies are new every morning. When you wake up the next day, it's another new mercy. Hallelujah. It doesn't get old. And that same mercy, that same grace is going to keep you even when you are in that season. Even when you are in that prison. That grace and mercy from the Lord is what's going to keep you. Number three, he gave him favor. Praise God. Can somebody praise God for favor this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout 2022. I am favored. I can't hear you. I said shout 2022. I am favored. I am walking in divine favor. Hallelujah. He will take you to places where you don't qualify. That's favor working on your behalf this year. He will take you to places where you're not supposed to even be there. They will call for you. Praise God. They will ask for you in places where you don't qualify. Hallelujah. How many of you remember the testimony of my sister in the house who was called for the job that she didn't think that she was ever going to get? That's the favor of God. Hallelujah. He's going to give you favor. Hallelujah. People will just fall in love with you. 
You'll just walk in a place and they will feel like, I don't know, I just love you. I just, I, something, there's something about you. There, there's just some, that's what they say. There's just something about you. It's not just something about me. It's the favor of God. It's all over me. It's all over me. The favor of Yahweh is all over me. The Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 43 to 44, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me heard over the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. I don't think you heard that Bible verse very well. It says, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Woo! As soon as they hear of you, they will obey you. And everything that you say, when you open up your mouth, they will want to listen. Everything that you have to say, they will think it's important enough for them to stop and listen. Hallelujah. Strangers will submit themselves to you. If that is not favor, I don't know what is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Favor. Favor. God showed him favor. But that didn't just happen. Joseph was committed. Even in the prison. Even in the prison. Come on, look at your neighbor. Said, even in the prison. The prison did not change his character. Prison did not change the commitment that he had. He still served. Even when he was in the prison. He was dedicated even when he was in the prison. If you stop complaining about being in your prison, maybe you'll start noticing what, why God allowed you to be in the prison. Because some of us focus so much about the, uh, on the prison and then we lose track of why God. We don't, we don't ask God, why am I in this situation? Why did you allow me? Because nothing happens without God allowing it to happen in our lives. And most of the time he's trying to show us something or he's teaching us something. Praise God. So... He was committed while he was in the prison. He still served while he was in the prison. He was leading. He was helping. He was not bitter. Because it could have been easily bitter, right? I don't deserve to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. Why am I here? He could have forgotten about his dream and just focus on being bitter, depressed. But the Bible said he was serving so much, so much that even the person that was in charge of the prison now asked him to be in charge once again. Woo! He just had that favor of being in charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we see why God chose him, because he could trust him. He was consistent. Consistency. Consistency. Come on, somebody shout consistency. consistency. He was committed. He was consist consistent. Keep serving. Slowly, you will see the result of your service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, we see that um, Joseph is in, in the prison and he's in charge. And um, God is using him even in the prison. Because I could imagine that even when he was in the prison, he was not treated like the other prisoners because he was made in charge again, right? If the other prisoners were eating crappy food, he wasn't eating that. I don't think so. If the other prisoners were being beaten and they were being insulted, I don't think that was. So even in the prison, Joseph was still enjoying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout commitment once again. Commitment. I can't hear you. Shout commitment once again. Commitment. Hallelujah. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Can God commit things into your hand? Or are you going to drop all the things that God committed in your hands when things are getting rough. Another thing that we see that Joseph had was he had that 
Because, um, you know, there's no true relationship when there's no uh, reciprocity, right? God cannot trust you if you are only taking, 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 right? He had, he had that relentless, relent, relentless serf, uh, uh, heart of a servant, right? Relentless heart of a servant. Because if, if, if I was Joseph, I was not going to serve nobody. What, I'm in prison. What, what you t- I was just going to be sitting in my bed and, and just be, allow them to lead me wherever they want to lead me. If they say, okay, it's time to, to go take your shower, I'll go take my shower. If it's time to eat, I'll go eat. Just be sitting there and be like, you know what? I'm, I, I, I didn't ask to be here. Let me just focus on what I, I I'm just going to be in, a prisoner. But he continued serving relentlessly. Hallelujah. Because God cannot trust you if all you do is take, 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 take. But sometimes you have to give. Give, give, give. Even when it's not con- conducive. Even, even when it's not convenient. Some people never really give themselves fully to anything. Regardless of being in prison or not, they never, they never give themselves fully to, to anything. Joseph gave himself fully to service. Some people never give themselves fully even to their own marriages, in their own families. Some people never give themselves fully into their businesses, their jobs, their dreams, your own dream. You don't give yourself fully to it. You keep complaining about how it's not working, how, oh, I've been trying for so many years and I've lost a lot of money. You've given up. You don't give yourself fully. You don't go all out for what you believe in. Praise God. But Joseph wasn't like that. He gave himself fully to what he, he believed in. Service. Commitment. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that if, if he did not do that? If he decided to give up? He was going to die in prison. If he did not take commitment seriously to serving, he was going to die in prison. Praise God. So look at your neighbor. Say, ask them, what are you committed to? Are you committed to something? Or you just... Because three things. Committed to your family. Committed to God. Committed to your family. Committed to the church of God. Right? Are you committed to God? Are you committed to your family? Are you committed to serving in the church of God? Praise God. Or you just come here and say... And and just say, I heard the message was good, but... I was sitting down and I saw a water, a water bottle on the floor. They don't know how to clean. Are you committed to something or you just want to take? Are you committed to something or you just want things that come to you? Can you give? Do you give? Have you given yourself fully to something before? Some people, they are so, they are so blessed and so gifted. But you will never see them come to, to serve in the choir because they cannot be committed to coming to rehearsal early in the morning. Some people are so gifted, but commitment is a problem. Because if I tell them I want to join that choir, they're going to tell me to be here by 8 o'clock. I can't do that. I need to be sleeping. I know this is not, this is not the time to shout, right? It's time to ponder upon that question. Are you committed to something? How committed are you? Hallelujah. Complaining. And lying. I give myself away. That's a lie. So you can use me. I give myself away. You're lying. You're not committed to anything. Thursday service, show up. No. Sunday service, no. You show up on Sunday, when are they going to finish? I think it's 12, it's 1230 right now. Maybe they have a few minutes to go. Let me see. Oh, it's one o'clock. They are not done. I need to go. Praise God. When is Apostle coming back from Texas? I'm going to show up in church when Apostle comes back. You only want something that comes to you. Because you want to always get, 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 get. What are you giving? What are you giving? Praise God. It's all about what I can get. 
Nothing about what I can give. If I know I won't get what I want, I won't even show up. Because of the give me mentality. Give me, give me, give me. If you don't learn to give like you, you're expecting to get, and if there's no reciprocity in your relationship with God, you will die slowly. And it's not a physical death. You will die slowly. Praise God. Hallelujah. In any area where you are expecting to reap more, you need to invest more. Or you will be disappointed. Any area. Any area in your life where you are expecting to reap more, you need to invest more in that area. Are you expecting God to pour down a blessings, from he- blessings from heaven, to open windows of heaven and pour you down a blessing, and yet you are not committed to anything that is happening in his kingdom? Do you think God will bypass everybody who, who, who serves and is committed and come and bless you? Hallelujah. Amen. Commitment. Can somebody shout commitment once again? Amen. Commitment to your own dream. If you don't believe in your own dream, nobody else will. You'll have to fight for your dream. You'll have to suffer for your dream. You'll have to, you'll have to let go of some things for your dream. It's not convenient. You keep working your dream. Hallelujah. Joseph is in prison, but he's still giving. He's still using his gift. He's he's interpreting people's dreams while he is in prison. Are you kidding me? I am in prison. I'm not supposed to interpret nobody's dream. Why are you even dreaming when you are in prison? I'm not supposed to, to, to interpret anybody's dream. We are in prison here. Everybody is on their own. You're on your own. I'm on my own. We're trying to survive. But the Bible says, this man, once again, he's committed. He's he's doing what God called him to do. He's interpreting other people's dreams. Can you interpret other people's dreams? Or it's all about your dream? Can you help people in their own dreams? Can you help somebody fulfill their own dream? People get jealous these days, even in the house of God. God blesses somebody with something amazing. A new house, a new business. And you never support it. Oh, we'll see how they're going to pay for it. We'll see. We'll see. Let's, let's see. Maybe by the end of this year, they will not be able to meet up with the mortgage. He interpreted other people's dreams. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know I'm preaching good than you're responding. If you don't encourage me, I'll encourage myself in the Lord. I'm interpreting my own dreams right here. He interprets the cupbearer's dream and it, it comes to pass. And then he gets out of, um, the, the, the cupbearer gets out of, of prison and forgets Joseph for two years. Two years! Because after interpreting his dream, he said, dude, you better remember me when you get there. Put in a good word for me. And this guy forgot Joseph. For two more years. He had to still be in the prison. After interpreting other people's dreams. And they came to pass. Can you imagine? So so this guy forgets about him. He forgets about him. He enjoys his life out in prison. And Joseph is still in jail. And then the, the Bible talks about how the, the king, Pharaoh, had his own dream and nobody could interpret it. And then this guy finally remembers. Genesis 41 verse 14. Let's read that quickly. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. I thought somebody was going to say amen here and just have some a praise in their spirit here. The, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph 
and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and he changed his garments and came into Pharaoh. Praise God. Somebody is coming out of prison today. If you only believe. I said somebody is coming out of prison today. Hallelujah. Somebody is being called out by the Almighty today. The Bible says Pharaoh sent out for Joseph. Pharaoh sent out for Joseph. Pharaoh sent out for Joseph. God is putting your name in the mind of somebody this morning. God is putting your name in the mind of somebody. God is pulling your file from beneath onto on top. In the name of Jesus. God is sending somebody on your behalf. Hallelujah. Woo. The Bible says they brought him hastily. They brought him fast. Quick. They brought him hastily. You are coming out fast. You are coming out fast. You are coming out of that dungeon. You are coming out of that depression. You are coming out of that insecurity. In the name of Jesus. And he shaved himself. He got clean. He put on cologne. He shaved himself. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he came before Pharaoh. Woo. Joseph slept one night a prisoner and he woke up another night in front of the king. Hallelujah. Who would have, who would have known that just one night would have made a difference? Weeping may endure but for a night. But joy comes in the morning, the Bible says. Hallelujah. It only takes 24 hours. It can only take God like, like a, it, 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 within a twinkle of an eye, God can change your story. Does somebody believe that this morning? That God is about to change your story? That God is about to interpret your own dreams? Hallelujah. You've been interpreting other people's dreams for many years. It's your turn and it's your time. Now it's your turn and it's your time. Hallelujah. You are about to be called out to the place of power. Places of authority. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is about to wipe away your tears. You have held on for so many years. You have held on for so long. It's time for you to have your dreams interpreted. Hallelujah. It was so many years back when Pharaoh, when, when, when Joseph dreamt that people were bowing for him. There was a lot of challenges along the way. Then finally, finally the dream was unfolding. Finally the dream was unfolding. Come on, your dream is about to unfold. Your dream is about to unfold. God is about to reveal your dream. You are about to see something happening because things have been still for so long. Things have been in one place for so long. You are about to see movement in your vision. You are about to see movement in your dreams. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's your time, child of God. It's your time, child of God. God can change your life. Within a twinkle of an eye, you can sleep today suffering. Wake up tomorrow a blessed person. You can sleep today suffering. Wake up tomorrow a millionaire. You can sleep today begging. Wake up tomorrow having plenty. Because it does not take God anything to change your story. I've come to tell somebody in this house, your story is about to change. Your story is about to change. Hallelujah. Praise God. But God wants you to be consistent. God wants you to be consistent, child of God. God wants you to fight with all you got. He wants you to fight with all you got. Because your dream, your dream the fulfillment of your dream is not going to come cheap. The fulfillment of your destiny is not going to come cheap. It will take you fighting. It will take fighting. It will take fighting. It will take consistency. It will take commitment. It will take fighting. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Stand up on your feet. Fight for your dreams. Look at your neighbor, say, fight for your dreams. Come on, look at your neighbor, say, fight for your dreams. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time. It's time. It's your season to come out of the belly of the fish, Jonah. It's your season to come out of prison, Joseph. It's the time. It's the time. It's the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God will release the resources that you need. God will release the wisdom that you need. God will re release the capability that you need in order to fulfill your dreams. 
Does somebody believe what I'm saying this morning? I said God will release the right resources. God will connect you to the right people. And God will give you the wisdom in order for you to, uh, to, to fulfill your dreams. In the name of Jesus. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Bible says. Hallelujah. Let the rivers begin to rise within you this morning. Hallelujah. The rivers of creativity, ideas, the rivers of revelation, the rivers of contact, the rivers of influence, the rivers of authority in the name of Jesus is rising on the inside of somebody this morning. In the name of Jesus, take your place, Joseph. It's your time. Woo, get ready to take over. There's a seat prepared for you. You are about to govern the whole nation. You are about to be the second in command, Joseph. You don't know what's about to happen to you. Come out of that prison and go take your place. Come out of that prison. Go take your seat. Come out of that prison. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has opened the book of remembrance towards you. The Lord has remembered you, Joseph. The Lord has remembered you. Hallelujah. Come on, I need you to open up your mouth and pray this prayer. Say, 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 Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom to hold on even when I'm in my prison. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. God, give me wisdom. God, give me strength to hold on when I'm in my prison. Not to give up when I'm in my prison. Not to relent when I'm in my prison. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Pray, pray, pray. Say, Lord, help me to hold on when I'm in my prison. Help me. Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace to hold on even when I'm in my prison. Give me strength Hallelujah. to hold on Hallelujah. even when I'm in my prison. Yes, Lord. Give me grace to hold Hallelujah. on even in my prison. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now pray this prayer. Say, Lord, connect me to the right people. Hallelujah. Connect me to the right people Hallelujah. who will interpret my yes, dreams. Lord. Come on, open up your yes, mouth and Lord. pray. Lord, connect me to the right people who will interpret my dreams. Connect me to the right people who will interpret my dreams. Connect me to the right people who will help me take me to my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory for revival in this place. The rivers of living water are rising on the inside of people. In the name of Jesus. And you are renewing new commitments. New commitments. Those who are lukewarm right now, Father, you are giving them new commitment, Father. In the name of Jesus, let revival begin to fall. Let revival fall. In the name of Jesus, new commitment. New commitment to your work. New commitment to what you have shown them. New commitment to serving in your kingdom. To serving in your house. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got to go, child, children yeah. of God. Come on, can you just clap your hands and give God the praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.